Germany produced a variety of infantry weapons during the Second World War. They created new and technically superior firearms that even the Allies were unable to conjure up. But there's one type of firearm that was rarely used during the war, the shotgun. The US would see shotguns issued to troops in the Pacific Theatre. But with all these advancements in firearms, did Germany actually use them? In today's video, we ask the question, why were there no German shotguns in World War II? If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. Firstly, there actually was a shotgun issued to German soldiers during the Second World War. The M30 Luftwaffe drilling, as the name would suggest, was issued to aircraft crew of the German Air Force. The weapon was a double barrel 12 gauge shotgun with a single rifle barrel fitted underneath. It had two triggers, one in front of the other, and a separate selector. With the selector pushed forwards, the front trigger would fire the 9mm rifle round. The rear trigger would fire the left shotgun barrel, which shot a slug projectile. Once the selector was pushed backward, the front trigger could now fire the right shotgun barrel, which projected birdshot. The drilling was intended as a survival weapon and not for use during combat. It was stored in a case within the aircraft, and once the pilot bailed out, he could retrieve it from the crashed plane. The shotgun could then be used to protect the pilot from wildlife as well as used for hunting if necessary. The M30 would be mainly issued to the Luftwaffe performing duties in North Africa, hence the thoughts about protection from animals. They were based on civilian versions of the weapon, and only around 2,500 were manufactured between 1941 and 1942. Realistically, the whole endeavour of issuing these to pilots was fruitless. The firearm in the case, with its ammunition and cleaning equipment, weighed about 15 kilograms or 32 pounds. A rather unnecessary weight for an aircraft, when a smaller and lighter firearm would likely fulfil the same purpose. Furthermore, if the pilot was bailing out and the aircraft going down, it was probable the case and firearm would be damaged in the crash anyway. But nonetheless, an interesting weapon for Germany, and probably one not mentioned very often. But why weren't weapons like this used in combat? For most military planners and firearm manufacturers, the Second World War seemed to evolve into a war fought at greater distances than that of the First World War. The need for shotguns, which are generally only effective at short-range engagements, was significantly less than that of rifles and automatic weapons. There is plenty of evidence to support this in the first three years of the war, with the open plains of North Africa and farms and fields of Western Europe seeing fighting from a distance. German soldiers would have little use for a shotgun in these situations. When Germany found themselves fighting the Soviets on the Eastern Front, especially in places like Stalingrad where house-to-house -house and hand-to-hand -hand combat was common, the increased need for a weapon like a shotgun still wasn't sought. This is likely for two reasons. Around that time, Germany was increasing their firearm capacity to effectively put more rounds towards the enemy. For example, introducing the Gewehr 41, a 10-round semi-automatic rifle, which was superior to the K98 bolt-action rifle. The introduction of a shotgun more or less goes against this German doctrine. Probably the more appropriate reason would be the grenade. The German stick, as well as the egg grenade, more than made up for a lack of shotguns. Clearing buildings was simplified with the ability to throw a couple of grenades inside, rather than risk the lives of their troops entering with a slow pump-action shotgun. The grenade would easily do more damage to the enemy than any shotgun could, as it also had the ability to hit multiple targets at once. Grenades were much cheaper to produce and could be made in much greater numbers. They could also be issued to all frontline troops instead of, say, a dedicated shotgun soldier within a small unit. German small unit tactics preferred the use of fast movements during their engagements. 
Using automatic fire from a machine gun such as the MG-34 or later in the war the 42 would lay down a base of fire to keep the enemy's heads down. Troops would then move up armed with rifles or submachine guns and throw grenades at the enemy to either stun or eliminate the threat. Although the United States military had a somewhat different view to the use of shotguns, the ones used in the Pacific weren't without issue. The M97 Winchester was a great weapon in certain situations, and with Japanese forces seemingly enjoying close combat with the Americans, having a shotgun nearby could cut the Japanese defenders down quickly. But one of the main issues was the ammunition. A modern shotgun shell is cased in plastic, but this wasn't the case during the war. Most shotgun ammunition was cased with paper, and with the humid, damp and wet conditions of the Pacific all too common, these paper shells were rendered useless if they got wet. They would expand and not fit in the barrel, or if they got wet enough, completely fall apart. The US did attempt to rectify this and create brass cased shells, however supply was limited and struggled to be manufactured, let alone reach the front lines. So shotguns as a whole weren't particularly favoured by any military during the Second World War. The Germans certainly didn't see a need to mass produce them, and the ones that were in service weren't even used for combat purposes anyway. This was a war of rifles and machine guns. Why do you think there was a lack of German or indeed shotguns overall during World War II? And were you aware of the M30 Luftwaffe drilling? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.